Welcome to the Empowering Choices Podcast. My name is Joshua. I am Lucas. And I'm Eric. Eric and Lucas are licensed professional counselors. And today we're going to do part two of our podcast called Dads and Boyfriends Manhandling the Enemy, which definitely is an aggressive title. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you listen to part one, you can see yeah. where we're going with it. Yes. Right. You know, and it and it definitely is kind of pointing to a certain type of relationship between dads and anyone who wants to be friends with their daughters. Right. You Particularly know. boyfriends. Not just Particularly friends. boyfriends. But and and this is really aimed at boyfriends. Because, you know, dad being like we talked about in the first podcast, you know, dad being a very main line of defense right. for a daughter. Um, I, you know, I, I hear a lot about in different times in different places, you know, that as we have, you know, become more modern, that men have lost roles of hunter, gatherer, protector. But then my pushback is, no, you, you really haven't. Your, yeah. your relationship with your children is a protection and your mm-hmm. relationship fathers with your daughters is a protection. Now, how you work with that can help can help really enhance that protection. Males need to see that there are boundaries. Right. You, you see this if you look at primate videos, especially silverback gorillas. Oh. The established silverback gorilla will be just doing whatever the silverback gorilla does, and the younger silverback gorillas are like, you know what, today's my day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're going to take over this, yeah. this clan. Right. Well, I want that throne, you know, and there will be a bit of a fight that will ensue, yeah. which can go all the way to death, but generally doesn't, but generally goes with the silverback gorilla going, you really underestimated my age and strength and your youth and up and coming strength. Yeah. And the silverback retains a lot of times his position for a long time. Right. You dads are the silverback. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the young guys coming in to, you know, be able to date your daughters are these young gorillas that are going, you know, I'm going to come in and kind of do what I want. And you're old and you're over 18. And what are you going to do about it? Which goes into the line of thinking differences because they don't have big picture thinking. They, they can't see the future and, and really predict that out for, you know, maybe now they can a week, a month or right. so far in there, but they really can't logically estimate a lot of different things as to whether or not what you would really do. Mm-hmm. So now we'll bring in kind of a story that I had. This is an experience that I did not go through when I was in high school, but I, I was able to be privy to. You were witness to what could have happened. I was not witness, being... yes, mm-hmm. yes. So I had a friend, uh, we were really good friends. Um, her name is April. And in high school, we were really close friends. We were in the youth group, we were in the church. You know, we, we uh, had classes together. We were really good friends. And her parents um, managed a motel in the town that we lived in. And so every once in a while, I'd be over at her house. We'd be studying. We'd be, you know, just hanging out. And her dad, her dad came in one day, and, you know, he knew my mom. He knew me from church. And he's like, Eric, I see you're here a lot. You, 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 you're here a lot. And, and I, I, know, that, I know that April, April and you, you hang out a lot. Now, He's from the South. They're from say, the South. Like you you weren't attempting Southern. to mock the man. It's just I'm not more mocking him. And, and if you're from the South, and, and Josh, Which you're, I am. you're yeah, from I, the that South. That sounded very... If I get it wrong, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that took me back. Yeah. Right. So you, and, it, and I'm going to pull up as much of the actual conversation as we had. And, and he go, Eric, he goes, I, I like you. Uh, I, I think you're, you're a nice boy. You're, you're a nice boy to have around my daughter. <laughs> And her, you know, she had two older brothers and uh, Andy and Richie. And uh, and I didn't know much about Andy, but, you know, Richie, I knew yeah. him. He was a nice guy uh, and everything. And, and he goes, you know, hey, you, I, I'm not going to see other other suitors that come along. 
and, and they wanted to to suit my my daughter. <laughs> and and he said, and there's a ritual that you have to go through. And but I mean, you 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 and April, you're friends, and and, and I, you're not ever going to hurt my daughter. But I just think I think you should see what the other boys have to go through. That you're not going to have to go through because it's not going to happen. <laughs> this is like the behind the scenes. This is the, the behind the scenes wow. of the thing, you know. And he goes, so uh, d- don't be worried about nothing. Just you know. And April's going, Dad, are uh, you serious? And she's. It sounds like he just wanted to put on the show again. Kind of. Richie comes out and goes, Dad, what are you talking about? This is Eric. Why? Why? Why would you? She, and he go now. Now Richie. Now just no. I no. Listen, <laughs> you just we just need to do what I'm just going to show him. I just want him to see what it is that other boys have to go through if they want to get close to his friend, because he needs to know this. And, and so, well, let's we're just going to show him. It's not going to be scary. <laughs> it's not going to be scary because it'd be scary if it, if it was them. So, okay, now come on out. And April's like, no. And I'm like, what is going on? I mean, I I feel like. I feel like I'm somewhere in the Sopranos, and somehow I just, <laughs> I just end up stepping off the cliff yeah. or something it, it, to my own death. Uh, and and so you know, he had us all go out to uh, to the because their the way their house was is that you had the the area that people would come into to be able mm-hmm. to get a room that that uh, reception area you know for a motel you know it's it's kind of an outward building. And uh, he go, okay, so here's, here's what we're going to do. We can go out here. So we all went out there, and he's behind the counter. He goes, yeah, you go up here, you know, behind the counter. My daughter will be back here. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm renting a room. And, and you know, and he laughs yeah. and goes, no, 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 you don't understand. You, you don't, they don't get to come in my house and, and, meet my, and meet me. They come to the counter. <laughs> and, and I'm like, Okay. And he goes, okay, so it, it kind of goes like this. Now, this, this is not for you. This is, this is not about you. He goes, but I would just be talking to them, and I, and I would reach out, and I would say, hello, I am, I am April's daddy, I, I, you know, and I'm Mr. So-and-so, and, and I, I'm very happy to meet you. And I'm so glad that you came here, you know, and, and I think it's wonderful that you like my daughter. She's a very pretty girl. I, you know, I like my daughter, too. I, in fact, I love my daughter. You know, and I think it's wonderful that you're here, that you would like to express that you also like my daughter. And I just want to show you a couple of things. Like, did you know that my son, Andy, her older brother, now he, he a big boy. He, he a <laughs> big boy. Now, about that time, a big dude comes in the front door blocking the exit to leave. Nice. And he shuts the door and he crosses his arms and he just leans up again. Oh, I shouldn't have leaned back like that. He just leans up against the door frame and crosses his legs. And and he's in a it just, you know, he's in blue jeans, work boots, and a flannel shirt that has the arms cut off. And suspenders, and you can see this dude has muscles. And he goes, now this, oh, by the way, this is Andy. <laughs> this, oh, is by my, the way. This, yeah. this, this is my son, my old son, Andy. Now, let me tell you something about Andy. Andy has this job that he does, and he goes out there in them woods, and, and, and he takes them chainsaw and sometimes just that axe, and he like cut down them trees. <laughs> and and he, he, he a lumberjack. He, he's he's a true form of a lumberjack, you know, like that Paul Bunyan type lumberjack. Well, you just look at them arms right there, and he flexes his arms, you know, and you see all these muscles. He like he take them trees and throw them over his shoulder, and he carry them down. Them other boys can't do that, but my Andy, he can do that. Hmm. He's strong, that boy. He break things in half with his bare hands. I think I saw him one time. He had like what was that three three of them axe handles. And here's Andy going, it was five, <laughs> five of them axe handles. And he snapped them over his knee like they've nothing. Now, I just imagine. Now, I'm saying this to some other boy. I ain't saying this to you. But can you imagine <laughs> just what he could do with a human body like that? If he pick it up like, I mean, if you hurt my girl. Now, you're not going to do that, Eric. This ain't for you. But this is what them other boys go through. But if I just say that now, if you hurt my, my baby in any way, Andy going to snap you over his knee. <laughs> 
I ain't nothing I can do about it. Because, I mean, Andy's a big boy. Andy's a big boy. It's awful hard to stop Andy when he gets going. He's like a locomotive coming down that hill. And when he got you in his sights, oh, boy, I'd be praying for you. I'd be praying to be something left. But don't worry. That ain't you, Eric. That You know, you don't need to worry about that. None at all. But, see, then, then what I do is I say, listen, I just want you to also know because, you know, Andy, so I, I got this thing under the counter, you know, and it's in, in one of them fishing tools that they make, you know, and it's a really interesting tool. You know, if you know anything about fishing and he reach under the counter and he pull it up onto the counter and you, you see it in movies, you know, it's called a fish whacker, you know, and, and it's made out of wood and it's about a foot long. It's got a handle that's, you know, carved into it and, and it gets big. It's, just, it's a mini baseball bat <laughs> it's called a fish whacker. He goes, this, I got this fish whacker here. And he made this for me. And he really <laughs> good boy. He's a good boy. He 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 a good carpenter too, you know. And he he made this for me to have here behind this counter for self defense, but it's also for daughter defense. You know, you got to understand. And you know, we all love April. And so I want to show you something about this fish whack. It's kind of neat. He, and he turns it and he goes, "You see that right there." And, and there's a darker spot <laughs> in 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 kind of the end of the fish whack. He goes. Andy done bore that out and let him fill it with lead. He said, this thing, you just t- go ahead, t- touch this thing. And, 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 and go, no, 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 you take that in your hands. You take that right there in your hands. And go, don't worry about it. I ain't worried about nothing. This ain't for you anyhow. But I would let them boys, they pick that up. And they, I'm like, there's, how much lead you put in this? <laughs> you know, it's like, this is some serious weight. You go, see, that's a serious weight right there. That do some serious damage to to them fish. Oh, bad guy, bad guy, come in here. I mean, you can swing that really good. I mean, try swing that, swing that. Oh yeah, yeah. See, you really get that swinging good. You know, now just imagine, you know, that hitting a bad guy. That that's gonna that's a really good. Thank you so much, Andy, for doing that for me. That is so that is so helpful. So you know, I, but it's not for you, Eric. It's not for you. I don't want you to be afraid. Not at all. Okay. All right now. Are you think? Are you have any idea what I'm feeling at this moment? You know, I'm just I'm looking at April and I'm looking at Andy and I'm looking at Dad and I'm Am like, I ever going, coming over to this house ever again? That's not what I was thinking. Am I going to make it out of this house alive? <laughs> out? Did I just enter Hotel California and this is why you don't go out? I don't know. But so we're sitting there and he goes, "Well, but this there's a little more to this story." <laughs> it keeps going. Yeah, it's you know I, I I need you to meet my other son. Now I know you know my other son, but I I don't think you know my other son. You know, and I did actually, and I knew a lot about Richie, but he, he goes, uh, and about that time, cause this is all rehearsed about that time. Richie comes from the back of the house and he comes up and he stands, you know, cause dad's right there in front of the counter and he stands a little off to his, uh, be his right. And so it's blocking the way to leave that, that area through the house from the back because yeah. at the moment dad has not blocked that way and so in your mind in my mind it's like i still have a way out that i could go <laughs> out that way and there is a window i could go through if i needed to richie blocked that and, and he goes now i i know that you could see because you know i know that you could see the difference between andy and richie and a big old boy he's a big boy yeah he's a big boy he's strong boy he, he, he can do damage w- with that size and with that strength. He go, but Richie, as you can see, Richie taller than Andy, but but Richie is is not, he don't have them muscles like Andy has. He 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 much skinnier, you know. I'm not putting my son down, but you have to understand, he there's a very different size difference between these two boys. But I'm telling you something about Richie. Richie no kung fu. Richie, a third degree black belt in Kung Fu. Now, he's not kidding. I knew Richie. That was just factually accurate. Just factually accurate. Richie had taken apart some football players at some wow. different university campuses who decided that they were just going to pick on the skinny guy. You don't want to mess with Richie. You don't want to mess with that. And yeah, exactly. Richie, yeah. he go, Richie, Richie, very good at this. He very good. He, he, he can, well, Andy take you and he, and not you, Eric. Andy pick up a, some boy, some bad guy, he break you over his knee. Richie just extend his fingers and you fly through that wall. I mean, that's the way Kung Fu works. I seen him do it. I seen him do it. 
You know, I was waiting for him to go. You see that little, that blood place, that, that red spot right over there? That's the last guy who went through that wall. He added that in later because I told him that would be effective too. But, you know, um, he goes, nah, nah, nah. so you don't want, I, I just tell them boys, you don't want to be hurting April. It, we, we love April. And so if you're going to come and you're going to be in April's life, then you got to understand the consequences to the things that you might be thinking you might be wanting to do. And we could be a real good, wonderful family to be around. Although Richie don't talk much. But you can be a real good family to be around. Or, or you could get hood. Not, not you, Eric. Not you. You're not going to get hit. And, not, and he, he goes, let me put this away. Okay, I'm going to put that fish whack away. Andy, thank you so much for coming in and being a part of this. Richie, it, it's all good now because this is Eric. It, you know, we, we're here. It, it's, it's, it's all okay. And, and they all left. And, and then Dad, he goes, you know, I've taken up so much of you guys' time. I'm just going to leave now. You guys just, you know, enjoy yourselves. You know, have some good, you know, company. And then he left and went back in the house. And I'm just standing there. <laughs> And I looked at April, and she looked at me, and she goes, you don't know how many times I've been through this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, how many of those boys, she, and I couldn't even get, she goes, none of them talk to me ever again. <laughs> that was the end of wow. attempting that to date the, April. End oh, of, my gosh. And so I said, okay, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I'm a little afraid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I didn't know Richie, <laughs> she goes, oh, I know that that becomes, I mean, she goes, Andy's scary. I mean, it just, he don't, he, you, you can never, he doesn't have a lot of facial expressions that show you where, what he's thinking, you know, and, and, and he, he just, he's a tough person. Richie's really expressive. He's really nice. He's really he had a lot of the southern mannerisms. He had a lot of the the pieces, and and she goes, yeah, she goes, but I totally understand if you didn't know my brothers, this this is a terrifying thing to have to go through, and, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I was feeling that. <laughs> he actually had me swing the fish whacker. She goes, yeah, that was new. That was new. <laughs> he didn't really actually have them swing the fish. And I noticed that when he handed me the fish whacker, Andy got nervous. And so Andy was on point that this was happening. And then and he looked at Dad and his eyes got wide. Like, what are you doing? I mean, yeah. I can take people out, but are you giving him a weapon I made? Oh. You know, <laughs> this could be harder, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll never forget... Because after that, because I, I still went over there, and, and I was still hanging out with April. You, you did go back. We Oh, yeah. We were there one one time, and uh, Andy and Richie were there, and we were in the front room. And how did this go? I, Andy, yeah, they were both there. And we started, like, early in the evening. You know, we were just hanging out. We were doing homework. You know, we're in the living room. You know, we're just talking. You know, we're enjoying ourselves. I didn't notice, and neither did April, that her parents went to bed. And and they knew that I was there. At least I thought they knew that I was there. But I don't remember actually seeing them when I got there or anything like that. I think because there's a back part of the house that you could be in that, that was all a part of you know their living area. And I don't think they ever came out because I think uh, Andy or Richie was running the front counter. And, and so it's about 1130 at night and neither one of us had even thought about time. This is a summer, you know, uh, you know, time. And, and so it just didn't feel like it was that late. And, uh, all of a sudden dad comes out to get a drink of water and, and it was kind of low lit lighting in there. And, and he, he looked over and he goes, April. April, you, you, who's that with you? Who's with you? And, and wait a minute, that is that a boy? Well, I don't have my glasses on. Who's that with you, <laughs> Richie? Richie, I need you to come out here. Andy, Andy, where you at? What? April got somebody out here. Somebody out here, and I don't know who that is. Well, I, something gonna happen here. We gotta have somebody get my my my, my fish whacker. We got something <laughs> going on here that this ain't good. And Andy comes out there, and Andy's just ready to kill. Uh, and Richie comes out, and he had puts his glass. He goes, 
what are you talking about, Dad? He goes, Them, that boy right over there. Uh, Who that boy? That boy shouldn't be here. Why is that boy? It's 1130. It's almost 12. What's that boy doing here? How could he read his watch? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good point. <laughs> but he was dead on. <laughs> and so he goes, he goes, no, no, uh, where's that fish whacker? I need that fish whacker. So Andy's coming in. He's got that fish whacker, and he's got it like padding in his hand. And Richie looks at me and goes, Dad, that's Eric. Is that who you're talking about? Because Andy's like looking for people yeah. around behind furniture. And he's like, are you talking about Eric? And he goes, what? That's Eric? Eric's there? Okay, wait a minute. Hold on, Andy. Because Andy's just like, he's ready. He's like that freight train. And and so he goes, I need my glasses. Somebody get me my glasses. And so he got his glasses. He put it in and goes, oh, Eric, that is you. Oh. I'm like, you know, <laughs> back in I'm about to die mode. Uh, <laughs> and it goes, oh, he goes, Rich, he goes, Andy, uh, don't worry about it. It's all right. Go put that back. And Rich is like, I'm going back to bed. And he goes, you go back to bed. It's okay. No problem. He goes, Eric, I, I just, I did not know you were here. He goes, and you know what? It's, it's okay. I, I know you got the best interest of my daughter at heart. And so it, I'm sorry. I, I thought it was somebody else, and they were going to be bleeding, but it's so, not you. you. You're not going to be like that. It's okay. <laughs> and, and he goes, you guys, you, you, you two enjoy yourselves. You just, you know, keep doing whatever it is you're doing right there. And, and he said, I'll tell you what, if I get up in the morning, and I was like, I'm leaving as soon as you go to bed. <laughs> he goes, if I get up in the morning and you still here, and because he had that inflection, I was uh -huh. like, that ain't never going to happen. He goes, <laughs> I got to know one thing. You had my daughter's interests and, and you had her reputation and at the forefront of your mind and ain't nothing that happened. And I going to cook you breakfast. And he turned around and went to bed. <laughs> and it was like the entire air got sucked out of the room. And I looked at April and she looked at me and she goes, that had never happened before. She goes, I thought you were dead. <laughs> I thought you were dead. Thanks, April. There's two yeah. of us that thought this, you know, yeah. especially when your brother came in. And, there, and she goes, nobody slows Andy down. <laughs> I'm like, even Richie has problems with that. Yeah. You know, and, and he, she goes, I can't believe what he just said. I'm like, me neither. And, and so in, and in that situation, what that reinforced in my mind is that absolutely... I want this man's respect. Yeah. And he has dealt that out in a way that there are consequences to your actions if you decide to go a certain way. But there is a huge amount of respect if you do this the right way. Right. And, and so we kind of sat there and we visited, you know, a little bit more. And I'm waiting for my adrenaline to kind of go down a lot more. And, and at that point, you know, we got, we were there for like about 20, 25 minutes. And I said, April, there's no way I want to see if your dad really would cook me dinner in the, or more breakfast in the morning. And she goes, yeah, I'm kind of, you know, thinking that's, it's really, he, it's nice of him to say that he does really like you. He never says this to anybody, you know, but I'm like, I think we should call it a night. And she goes, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> you know, and, and so off I went home, you know, and I was always accepted at their house. I, her dad had always come up and talked to me. He always wanted to know how things were going, you know, and it, because in the first one we said, hey, don't be friends with mm -hmm. the boys, he always treated me respectfully and cordially, but because he put this, this foundation there, I knew we weren't friends. Mm -hmm. But I knew that there was a different type of a relationship that, that was established there. And he, he would, because he was always very supportive, I think you know there were some things I did, and he put funding towards those things at different times. Um, always was good friends with Richie. Um, you know, and so, uh, did, but this lasted, this, this was a lasting impression in my mind that I can even come back and tell you this whole story. And the, the point is, 
not that you that you have to threaten the boys who come into your, your daughter's lives, but as fathers, we need to make it very, very clear that there's this distinct difference in the relationship. This is my daughter. This is my son. I'm here for them. And if they do some, so, I mean, we'll cross over because, I mean, my parents were really good about this in grade school. They were there to support me. They were there to support if something went bad, you know, with a teacher or something or a classmate. But they also had the boundary of if you're the one doing it, we will come down twice as hard on you. We will defend you, but we are on the side of what is right. And so if you're the one causing the problems, we're not going to defend you. You're going to get whatever is going to happen to you at school. So if at that time, you mm-hmm. get your name on the board, you get checks, you'd stay after you do sentences, you do all, you know, stuff like this. And then you're going to come home and be grounded. You know, but if you didn't do it, we're going to be there to support you. I had a client who said that uh, her son moved the wood pile in her backyard mm-hmm. When he got in fights at school, uh-huh. and uh, she said, "Yeah, that boy moved the wood pile more than uh, more than anyone I could have thought possible." <laughs> oh my god! And she said, "Depending yeah. on depending on what had happened, I maybe needed the wood pile moved three feet. I maybe me- needed it moved across the entire <laughs> acre that I uh, that I was on at the time." Right? And she said, "But it worked." I remember uh, two brothers, and one of their chores that they had to do every day when they came home from school is they had to move the hundred hay bales from one side of the yard to the other. And every day, every day. And, and this is in Legrand. So, it, you know, there's rain, there's snow, there's all kinds of stuff. So if they, she always knew if her boys were getting along, because if they were getting along, they worked together as a team and mm-hmm. they, they moved it quite quickly. If they weren't getting along, they would, she'd see them each struggling with their individual hay bales, <laughs> moving them across the yard. Because depending nice. on how you bale hay, yep. hay bales are really heavy it could sometimes. Be really heavy. I mean, they make a hundred pound hay bales. Yeah, now mm-hmm. add snow, now add rain. Yeah. You know, and as it helped them, uh, the older boy turned out to be incredibly strong. I can't imagine why. And dominated his weight class in wrestling. <laughs> It, and this was just something that she had them do every day. Every day. Regardless of what el- anything yep. else had happened? Yep. She was like, I want them to learn follow through and responsibility and that there are things that you just need to do as a part mm-hmm. of chores. And since they've had a lot of difficulty doing chores, mm-hmm. here's the chore they have to do before they do anything else. Hmm. You know, creative anyway. For them, it, it worked well. Right. You know, and that's the thing is use these things as springboards. Yeah. Right. You know, you have to know your kid. And for some kids, um, it would crush them. And for other kids, it's exactly what they need, you know, and you have to base that on, you know, how you've gifted them, how you've gotten to know them, what you're seeing with them. I mean, one of the big struggling pieces that I have, you know, in working with kids and families is there's a lot of assumptions from parents they should just be able to do this. They should just accept this. This is just fine. It's, it worked that way for me. It'll work that way for them. The more kids you have, you you know, you can see that not everything works for them. Just yeah. assuming that yeah. it worked for me, so it'll work for my kid. Yep. Or it worked for kid number one, therefore it'll work for kid number two. Or this is what we do in our society, so that's just what we do, and this is just, it just works. Mm-hmm. Now you have to get to know them to see if it's really working. Mm-hmm. You know? I don't think April's dad had that consideration in mind as to whether or not it was working for his audience. <laughs> so you correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, but kind of yes, in you, in Southern culture, that piece is not a right. a, is not there for that that yep. first consideration. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, and it because yeah, she hated it. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking for the yeah. for the for the male suitor in mind that he wasn't taking them into consideration, but. Also, April. Right. She didn't appreciate mm-hmm. his uh, theatrics. She didn't appreciate it, but she knew it was going to happen. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he didn't, you know, dad and, and her brother didn't care about the other boys. Right. You know, mm-hmm. they, they wanted to make sure she was safe and protected. Yeah. The mm-hmm. whole time you're telling that, it, it's almost like in my mind, I see it as kind of a sitcom. It's like mm-hmm. comical on one hand I and, and, and scary on the other, uh-huh. depending on whose angle you're viewing it right. from. Right. But that would make a huge impression. 
Right. <laughs> you're, huge, you're 16, impression. 17. Yes. Mm-hmm. You've got, because Richie is, you know, just, I mean, he's a couple years out of high school. Right. Like 20. Andy's <laughs> older. He's, you know, probably 25, 26 yeah. at the time, you know. And mm-hmm. so, in you know, and he was a lumberjack. He was, you know. Uh, that wasn't hyperbole. That was not hyperbole. Okay, he, maybe carrying the tree down a hill was a little hyperbole, but. I kind of I I asked Richie about that one time, and he goes, "Well, uh, okay, listen, it it depends on what you're seeing as a tree. Pine He's tree, not yeah. going to take a great big ponderosa pine and just throw it over his shoulder." But he goes, "I have seen him carry sections of trees, substantial chunks of wood. Yep, yeah, that took several men, and, and then wow. he's just throwing one over each shoulder and walking down. Yeah, you know, and they're like working together." You know, and so he he goes. Andy is incredibly strong. Did April ever end up dating anyone, <laughs> or did she join a nunnery? <laughs> uh, she she did date later in life, but it was later when when uh, we went to college <laughs> when she was yeah. not nearby, not near, <laughs> not near in that area. Well, from her dad's perspective, it was probably a very successful venture. Then, yeah, uh, probably was. <laughs> that was a great story. That's uh, I'll be thinking about that for a bit. Is that the so. subtitle of this episode? Is story time with Eric? True, I think so. <laughs> southern, yeah. southern story time. Southern with Eric? story time, and and I do have to give it to you. Very good uh, voice acting accent there, because that you know I am from the south, and every people, you know, if you're from there, you do know that, that people do talk that way. If you're not, you may think, oh well, that's a little he's overindulging. That's no, he's comical. really not. That's if you want to go down to Mississippi and to different places. That is that's exactly what a father would sound mm-hmm. like uh, as they're scaring you to death about uh, <laughs> but doing anything with their daughter. That's where it was, they were from Mississippi. <laughs> okay, that's, well, there yeah. you go. And that's you a know. very, yeah. Well, that was great. Uh, we have uh, many more podcasts uh, with great stories. We also have uh, courses and classes. You can find those uh, by visiting our website, empoweringchoices.community, or go to the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store and search Empowering Choices Parenting. Download our app. It has all of that in there. And uh, we will see you on future episodes with more stories and more things to share. 